Grom the Paunch was not only the largest and most powerful goblin to have ever lived, he was one of the greatest greenskins ever, being the only greenskin warlord to have ever made a successful invasion of the distant lands of Ulthuan. Gobos are cowardly and disloyal, but nothing stirs their wicked hearts like Grom, who embodies their nauseating, boisterous, and often unsettlingly greedy nature. This, combined with Grom's superlative stature, is the recipe to Grom's ability to form some of the most legendary wars of all time. On the subject of recipes, Grom's power is defined by his diet. He is a very hungry boy. Different meals confer different buffs. Take this troll meat, for example. It's the secret to Grom's size, and with the right recipe, will bestow all his gobos with regeneration. Not sure how the trolls feel about that. Yeah, sod it. I'll keep them sweet with this stunty ale. When added into the mix, it'll grant unbreakable via their dulled senses, as well as becoming 50% less costly to recruit. When playing Grom's campaign, it's easy to get distracted with the allure of filling his belly with another delicious augment to nullify the next idiot in your way. For example, here's Grom splashing around in a Mortal Empires campaign, looking for a delicacy that grants Squigs some extremely explosive properties. And when it comes to flattening idiots, Grom has plenty of tools at his disposal. Giant river troll hags are hateful and bitter creatures, far larger and more dangerous than their common kin, and endowed with an innate ability to shape the winds of magic. She's a lot beefier than the average caster and can be effective in melee combat, but do not expect her to win the battle by herself. Seeing her behind the front line and stomping around making use of her magic and debuff abilities is probably her most effective battlefield role. They are also masters of the lore of death, adding a new flavor to the magical output of the Greenskins. The Fishy Tittle Muncher is one of Grom's starting units, so you'll get to begin mastering it from turn one. Elsewhere on turn one, Grom will start with two other varieties of troll, including river trolls, who resemble the bottom of the river if that riverbed was populated by the most revolting trolls imaginable. Their stank is so offensively off-putting that enemies will find it more difficult to land their melee attacks even from 30 meters away. Grom loves them all the same. We've all been there after all. Stone trolls tend to consume large quantities of stone and rock. The natural magical inertia of the stone imbues them with a certain degree of magical resistance. The troll is a robust unit, capable of soaking up damage, legging it, then regenerating a bucket load of HP before rolling back around for the leftovers. Usually, they're let down by their poor leadership, but the dulled senses granted by the Magnum pizza I cooked up earlier will last 20 more turns, or until I replace this dish with a different recipe. Grom has the potential to gather every greenskin contingent in existence, but on turn one, he starts with just one of the four variants of snotling man pump wagons. The spiky roller variant that Grom starts with is better when kept in sustained combat. They feature higher weapon strength than normal, and they're unusually adept at launching enemy combatants on contact their whirling rollers flinging infantry left and right at the slightest touch. As if there wasn't enough bedlam, snotlings can also attach exploding spores to the front of their wagons, which burst when the pump wagon hits anything. Grom rides into battle with his trusty night goblin assistant, Nibbler, who acts as an advisor via the quests he offers you. You don't have to listen to that gear though. Grom usually listens to his stomach anyway, which lends itself to his freewheeling gameplay. Keep getting grilled with flame attacks, focus on acquiring and frying up some hell pepper shrooms. Or you could aim to turn the table with your own flame attacks, courtesy of the Phoenix Claw ingredient. Mmm, centigrade milk. There's a recipe for every occasion and every craving. As long as you've collected enough scrap and have the right ingredients, you can cook up your favorite dishes on demand, as your next battlefield engagements dictate. You can also make use of the Greenskin's new scrap currency in the te uh, big thinking tree. For starters, you'll usually want to take down the stunties at Karak Zorn, so you can claim the eight slot provincial capital for yourself. Oops, looks like I spent too much scrap, and now I can't get the armor piercing weapons I wanted here. Scrap that, I guess. From 
here, there's a huge buffet of options to feast on recruitment-wise. If you can resist the squigs, you might just want to start dabbling in a little shamanic secret source ASAP. Don't worry though, you won't have to get to a tier 5 building before you get to taste the delicious destruction the rogue idol is capable of. These mighty magical constructs can crush just about anything that gets in their way and are thankfully available via a fleeting but deadly summon in Grom's campaign. There's so much to love about these big rocky boys. They buff leadership map wide, they can soak damage, and the more damage they do soak, the harder the idol will hit, transforming its battlefield role with brutally hard hitting damage. The Regiment of Renown variant even adds longer distance boulder chucking to its long list of battlefield capabilities. As you upgrade your cauldron via the Food Merchant's Challenge, you'll be able to add more ingredients to your dishes and boost their effectiveness significantly. As if you weren't hungry enough to get cooking with Grom, his power scales alongside the number of recipes he invents. The more you get cooking with Grom, the chonkier Grom will become, with more hit points and more gobos by his side. Grom is famous for leading his war on such a mad one that they ended up racing pump wagons through the streets of Middenheim, dismantling half the empire and eventually sieging on an entirely different continent. Altharion is the only person to have ever taken down Grom, and Grom is not the type of goblin to allow anyone who defeated him to draw a breath whilst he is still standing. Altharion cowers behind the walls of Ivress once more. Grom might not be big enough to smash Ulthuan into the ground just yet, but... Subscribe and check the playlist in the description to be the first to learn about all the latest and greatest coming from Total War. Thanks for watching.